when I was given the movie to direct, it's not my movie. I did not write the script. It was not my idea. When I was given, there was already script written, Revenge of the Ninja. Jim Silk was the writer. And there was already a star, Shoka Sugi. This, this was how the company presented to me as a package. This is the script. This is the star. And, and, and uh, you know, and Shoka Sugi kind of took me and showed me the, those uh, Ch Chinese movies, the Hong Kong movies of martial art. And I realized one thing uh, in my mind regarding a range of the ninja. I did not want to make, I didn't want to make one of those uh, martial art movie, kung fu movie, karate movie of the of the East, of the Hong Kong, because they are full of martial art, martial art. And in my judgment, in my opinion, I thought this will not be uh, uh, good enough for Western audience or not. They are not, it will be hard for them to digest it. If it's only martial art, martial art, martial art. I wanted to do Western. I wanted to do uh, uh, James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> this was my idea about what kind of movies that I want to make. So I came up, the conclusion for myself was, let's mix the two genres together. I will take martial arts, I will take general, so I call general action, regular, regular action, Western action, and, and mix them together. And, and luckily, Shoka Sugi, which was really the man behind the martial art in the movie, he agreed with me. He saw the same thing. He wanted to become a Western, a, a hero for the Western cinema, for general world cinema. He was not interested to be a Hong Kong uh, star, a Hong Kong style of movie. So he came along with me on this idea. And and I was surrounded by Hollywood people. Everybody who worked in the movie was local from Hollywood. So they were thinking like me, like our stunt coordinator, uh, Steve Lambert, Shokasugi, which was choreographing the fight. So, uh, uh, the, the, we were looking for, a, there was a script and I say, and, and in the script there were action sequences. It's not completely detailed on, in, in script, not every act, the action is not detailed really what you will do, but very general terms. It's a car chase or a fight. Or, and, but the nice thing that we all agree that we are doing a mixture. Some of the scenes of the action scenes will be martial art type of oriented sequences, scene. And some of the scenes are going to be action, gunshot, car chases, punches, you know, <laughs> what we are used to see in a Hollywood movie. So in my opinion, this hybrid, this mixture of the two genres of cinema will give us what we are looking for, a type of a movie that will be attractive to all kinds of audiences around the world. So, you know, we started to work. Uh, an action sequence takes many days to do because we do it from small pieces. We shoot small pieces of action. And, uh, and, and uh, the two big action sequences in the movie, one is in the, there is a chase, big uh, uh, scene that starts in a fight in the, in the gallery that belongs to Shokasugi and develop into a chase with a car that is jumping on the roof and, you know, gets in and drives. This is about seven minute uh, sequence, uh, but our biggest uh, uh, action sequence was the finale of the movie. And we decided to, that, uh, uh, you know, it, it was my decision, but with the help of people, of, of everybody who was working with me, stunt department, uh, martial art department, special effects, that we will start, uh, it will be a big building and we start the action from the low or go up, 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 and we will end up uh, the sequence on the roof. And this was a tall building, maybe 30 stories high. And we'll end up the, so this sequence is, it's more than 10 minutes, like 12 minutes action sequence nonstop. And uh, and it took her days. It's not, it's not simple. It doesn't happen in one day, <laughs> two days. It takes maybe a week and a half. Uh, sometimes two two weeks to do such a complicated and long action sequences, and uh, and again uh, to answer your question, that most of the choreography of the martial art fights were done by Shoka Sugi. Shoka Sugi is a you know a sensei, black belt, expert in martial art, uh, in the subject of ninja and other field of martial arts that I'm not familiar with. And he had a group of people around him all the time. His uh, students were. You know, like six students were with him all the time, 
and he will give the, he will choreograph the fights for the, um, the martial art fight. And we had a stunt coordinator, stunt uh, choreographer, uh, Steve Lambert, that also had one or two assistants. We had one assistant, but he collected local stunt people from Utah, from Salt Lake City. And he came up with the sequences that were action, not so much martial art action. As for myself, it was for me also a good lesson. Uh, listen, being a student of cinema and a viewer of cinema, I, I understand action in my brain, but I was never involved in building action, making action, really cinematic action. And this was a good lesson. And I, I saw that I'm good with this. I know how to put it together in a cinematic way that it will be exciting, exciting for the audience. And apparently it was successful because the movie was, was successful, Revenge of the Movie. Somehow I was lucky. I was in the right time, in the right place, and they gave me this Revenge of the Ninja. We finished Revenge of the Ninja. We finished the editing. We needed additional photography. We did some additional photography to complete the movie, to make it look good. And Canon was clever enough to give us one more week of shooting to finish, to complete the movie. And the movie was ready. And they, like every other movie, they show it to the studios. And Boom, suddenly MGM said, we like this movie, we want to take it. For Canon, it was a big success. They never, you know, every movie that they try to push to the studio, the studio didn't want. And here, suddenly they have a movie that big company like MGM is willing to distribute it. I was a young director who just directed one non-commercial movie and one commercial movie, I didn't understand the significance of it yet. Then, today I understand that a studio is taking the first movie that I directed, they, they are willing to take it for national distribution. It's unbelievable. And they opened the movie 800 theaters in only half of America, only, uh, they call it from the, the east side, from the Mississippi River to, the, to New York, with 800 planes. That's a lot for independent, small independent movie, you know, low budget movies. And, and, and it was success. In New York, in New York City, in the theaters, it was on the first week, it was on the top of the grossing list. Uh, it made more money than studio movies. And then they took the 800, you know, I played in the east of uh, the United States, maybe four or five, six weeks. Then they moved the 800 prints to the west side from the Mississippi to Los Angeles. Spread it. So this movie was big success for Canon, and and also for me. I I'll tell you, I did not understand it at the time. I must admit, for me it was I enjoy. I I make movies. That's what I wanted to make. So suddenly for Canon film and maybe for other companies, but you know I was not approached. I don't know. But for Canon film, I was a good director. It's the director that makes money. <laughs> That's okay. Fine. Let's give him another movie. So it's launched my career. I made many movies. I made about 25 movies from this, coming out from this uh, Revenge of the Ninja that luckily, or because of many elements that came together and probably including my skill as a director. And the movie took off and then Revenge of the Ninja, American Ninja, American Ninja number two. Breaking through electric movie, etc. Directing and, the the uh, Shokozugi, the the sound, the the music, the the teams, everything like you said, everything was coming together. Yeah, you're right. Everything was right. Everything was in place, especially to the taste of us. When I say us, Western audience. If we are making action movie, let's give the audience action. So the story is only 40, 45 minutes. Story, dialogue, some dialogue scenes. They are not too, too much of a classic, the dialogue scene. But, but, the, but there was 45. So whoever bought the ticket, whoever rented the cassette, they got what they paid for. They got 45 minutes of exciting action. And, and because many reasons, it, uh, as you say, it became classic, in the, especially in action crowd and especially with martial art crowd. And the movie is pretty old. And you know, everybody, all of the audience that are watching this, they know that most of the movies which are made in the world, like most of the books written in the world, most of them, the majority are disappearing. People forget. There is only 
small amount of artwork or not art, let's say entertainment work that really stays for 40, 50, 60 years, that, that's, that, uh, that uh, the test of time, they stand the test of time. And, and so this is it's a big deal. If you take a movie like Revenge of the Ninja, it was low budget, independent movie. And here we are 40 years later, and we're still talking about it.